What's the scariest thing that's ever woken you up during the middle of the night? My boyfriend screaming at me to wake the frick up was a car on fire pretty much right outside our bedroom window. How I managed to sleep through the exploding tires sound is beyond me. The crap was loud. Pretty much the exact same thing happened to me a few weeks ago. There's an alleyway across from my house and there was a car in it that was straight up on fire. I'd heard a few loud bangs and assumed they were fireworks until I looked out the window and saw a burning car. I am still a sleepwalker to this day but when I was 17 I sleepwalked down two floors of my house into our concrete basement. It was all wet because it had recently flooded and we had rolled all the carpet up onto one side of the room. I tripped over the carpet while walking around down there and I woke up alone, in be dark, suddenly falling down onto the wet floor not sure where I was. I was terrified because I had been in my bed what felt like minutes before. I did it to myself but it the scariest way I've ever woken up. Woke up groggy, out of sleep paralysis. Went to push off the bed and realized my left arm is gone. There's no way right, maybe my arm had just fallen out. Reach over with my right arm to feel for my left arm and freak the frick out because all I feel is my torso. Genially freak out for a minute checking and rechecking. My arm is literally gone. And then I felt human skin above my head. My arm had fallen asleep over my head and behind the pillow. Apparently my armpit had played a little joke on my brain and reported back as being a shoulder stump. This happened to me once when I was in high school. My dad woke me up for school. When I sat up I started freaking out because my arm was gone. I couldn't find it and I was half asleep. Finally I felt up and found it. I had to pull it down with my other hand and it was probably at least 15 very painful minutes that I had to wait for feeling to come back. I was 11. Woke up to the sound of screaming and shouting. My cousin, who was living with us, was about 17 and in my room holding the door from being opened. On the other side of the door was my mother screaming to be let in. My sister was in the bunk under mine and she was crying. Suddenly my cousin comes to and opens the door. My mom rushes in and asks my cousin and us if we were okay. There was commotion in the hallway and living room but I couldn't tell what it was. When I peeked out of the doorway I saw my stepfather holding a small 22 caliber rifle looking out the windows frantically. Suddenly cops show up and start arresting my stepdad. My mom is yelling at the police and I'm sitting there with my cousin and sister like WTF. We all notice the broken sliding glass door and suddenly realize there are large bullet holes all over our house, through the entertainment center, and above the couch where my cousin was sleeping just minutes before. I guess what happened is someone was shooting at some people walking by our apartment and the stray bullets all hit our place. My cousin woke up and immediately thought people were inside shooting us so he ran to the kids room and kept anyone from coming in like a badass. My mom woke up and immediately thought to check on us but couldn't get into the room because of my cousin. My stepdad grabbed his gun out of instinct. The cops showed up and assumed my stepdad was the shooter and arrested him. All in all a pretty fun night. Just moved into a new house, not really unpacked other than a mattress on the floor. Startle awake in the middle of the night. I'm wide awake and I don't know why. Then I hear this faint noise on the hardwood floor followed by a small thunk. I wait. Same furtive noise followed by another thunk. This sporadically goes on for a couple of minutes and I decide to investigate it. Go across the hall fully expecting to find someone trying to stealthily rob us or something. Nope. One of the dang cats had taken a round makeup container out of one of the boxes and was baiting it slowly across the empty hardwood floor. Dang cats. I have lever handles on our doors. And our cat has learned to stretch up and slowly pull it down while pushing the door open. Sounds and looks like a serial killer scene from a movie. At uni, my bedroom was on the ground floor of the house. I was woken up around 4am by scratching and heavy breathing at my window which I tried to ignore for 20 minutes hoping that whoever it was would frick off. It was a long 20 minutes of trying not to crap myself. Off they did not frick. So I decided to go out the front door to kindly ask them to cease their scratching and heavy breathing. Turned out it was one of my housemates who was absolutely off his tea, lost his keys, wallet and phone on a night out. He thought scratching on my window would be better than knocking on the door or ringing the doorbell. Comma off they did not freak. Here's my upvote for that. Cat knocked a glass of water off my windowsill and it landed on my head. 
Thought someone had broken and tried to beat me to death because I thought all the water was blood. My cat is a nur. My kittens dropped a live bee on my neck while I was sleeping I was stung not a pleasant way to wake up. My almost 4 year old standing at my bedside staring right at me. Once my eyes were open she said I brought the monsters in here then went back to bed. Thanks kid. I had you so they'd go in your room. Kids get creepy real quick lol. I put my baby to sleep and went to the living room to watch TV. I was enjoying how peaceful it was until all of a sudden I hear these fast footsteps headed towards me. Seeing this small human run towards me scared the crap out of me. My baby had learned to walk not that long ago and I wasn't used to hearing his little footsteps. Lightning hit the tree outside my house. The bang was so loud I saw myself in the third person and honestly thought I died. I can't even explain how that happened. Seeing yourself in the third person probably means you were experiencing depersonalization which is associated with anxiety fear exploding trees. My brother's friend broke into the house once while I was sleeping on the couch, and I woke up to him in the fridge. I didn't know who he was so I stayed silent. I was 9 I think. A gurgling sound and the smell of a warm shirt. I thought I crapped the bed. But it turns out the city sewer system backed up and flooded into my house. In hindsight crapping the bed would have been much easier to clean up. Was a teenager living in a pitch black basement room. Had a strobe light because. IDK teenagers are weird. Apparently the on off switch was loose and moved to on. You don't know fear until you wake up in the middle of the night in a pitch black room with a strobe light flashing. Haha. <laughs> I was staying at a hotel one night when the fire alarm got tripped. Except I was in a handicapped accessible room, so there was also a strobe light in addition to the ear splitting alarm. That was not pleasant. I was in the hospital a few years ago and needed an anesthesia. I woke up later during the night and legit had no clue where I was or why I was there. I got paranoid and ripped out my IV and left my room intending to escape the hospital. I made it all the way to an exit when security guard stopped me. I freaked out thinking I was being held prisoner, and nurses had to come down and give me sedatives. When I woke up the next morning there was someone in my room who explained everything that happened. Sounds like a good movie. When I was about 10, I went with my parents to stay in this cabin in the mountains in North Carolina. The cabin was beautiful, however, it was two-story and the staircase was outside. Also, the owner asked us to feed his cat, for which the food was kept in a plastic. Hard to open barrel. Anyways, because I was so old then, I wanted to sleep on the top floor by myself. My parents said it was fine and that I should just stomp on the floor if anything was wrong during the night. Well, one of the nights, I heard something that sounded like someone breaking in and totally freaked out, especially because I was by myself. Started stomping on the floor that my parents thought there was a herd of elephants above them. They came up. Didn't see anything but because I was so freaked out, I went to sleep in the bed with my mom downstairs and my dad took the bed upstairs. Well, I guess in the middle of the night, he too heard something. He went to investigate and the burglar was actually a raccoon that had broken into the cabin. It took off a screen on the door, and was now rolling the barrel of cat food around the floor, trying to open it. Was up blasting music at about 3am drinking by myself. I live in the country so it's all rich snobs cottages and empty forests so nobody around. I go to watch a movie and turn off my stereo and as I did I heard footsteps somewhere in my house. Not light but like a work boot. I drunkenly grab the most weapon i.e. thing I had which was a pocket knife and go running out. For some ungodly reason there was a deer in my kitchen. Just standing there. It had somehow gotten in somewhere but the thing is that everything was locked. I love the mental image of you bolting into your kitchen, ready to fight a murderer to the death, and it's a deer just standing there. I heard a gigantic crash, which I presume to mean my cat just found a way to knock my TV or my entire gaming shelf over, but when I went out to see, nothing was wrong. Not even the slightest hint something had fallen. The smell of smoke. We couldn't find the smoke so our first thought was that our girls were burning to death in their rooms. Woke us up in an instant. Thankfully everything in our apartment was okay. Our downstairs neighbors were the ones who had a fire. And it was out by the time we got down there to check. I reported them to our landlords. 
because it wasn't smoke detectors that woke us up, it was the smell of smoke. I'm 99% sure they unplugged theirs or pulled out the batteries. If the fire had been any bigger I'm worried we wouldn't have been told and could have either caught fire ourselves or had dangerous levels of smoke inhalation. I woke up in the middle of the night to a rustling sound at my bedroom window. I wasn't sure if I had dreamed the noise or not and stared sleepily at the window for a few seconds. Very slowly my window began to slide open, long thin fingers gripping the glass. My eyes widened, my heart pounded, my breathing froze. For a moment I was paralyzed with pure fear. Something was silently sliding my window open in the dead of night and coming into my room. My fear soon turned into some kind of primal aggression. As quietly as I could I rose out of my bed and reached for the baseball bat underneath it. The dark shape was now climbing through my curtains. Its lanky arms reaching down to my floor. Crawling. Almost slithering in. I turned on the light and took a few fast steps toward the creature with a baseball bat raised ready to deal a crushing blow when I suddenly stopped. It was my little sister high as a freaking kite. She had forgot her keys, was locked out, and didn't want to wake my parents in the middle of the night while stoned. She thought all this was pretty funny and proceeded to go to her room and pass out. I laid in bed and stared at my ceiling for a while, adrenaline still pumping thinking about my almost confrontation with some sort of alien monster rapist demon which turned out to buy my stone sister. Thankfully I turned the light on before I swung. I'm just glad my family's door has a fingerprint sensor so I can get in no matter how wasted I am. I'm a professional firefighter. When we are on shift at night we are allowed to sleep. It's pretty routine to get woken up for any kind of emergency that we respond to from shootings, to car wrecks, to house fires with people trapped. When we catch a run the bunk room lights come on, and there's a very gentle beeping sound that is meant to wake us gently, instead of jolting is awake and spiking our blood pressure, before the dispatcher goes on the air to tell us where we are going and why. A few weeks ago at around 3am, the lights came on and there was a different sound. It was an alarm that sounded like the world was ending. We all sprang out of our bunks, wide-eyed, ready for battle. Then the dispatcher came on the air to tell us that the National Weather Service had issued a winter storm warning, effective two days in the future, in a city that's no stranger to winter weather. We were very confused. It's surprisingly comforting that they took the alarm sound into consideration to not jolt you guys awake. 3. My cat who was sleeping at my feet, starting to hack up a hairball. Nothing has ever woken me up quicker than hearing my cat about to puke all over my bed in the middle of the night. My old man kitty used to bath, a lot. Nothing in my life has ever taken me from sound asleep to awake quicker than when he used to start hacking something up on my bed while I was asleep. It was instant lol. Woke up feeling oxygen starved, fluish, and fuzzy headed in pitch black. Got my crap together enough to turn on my headlamp only to discover that I couldn't see through my tent. It had snowed so heavily overnight that my tent was covered thickly enough to blot out the moon and stars that were now shining. Likewise, so much snow had accumulated around my tent that it effectively sealed the rain fly. I was by myself in a one person tent and slowly suffocating. I opened the zipper. Stuck my arm outside to move some snow around and flapped some air into the tent and instantly felt better. Whoa, so glad you woke up. I woke up to the air raid siren blaring from outside my window. It was like 5am. It couldn't be any drill or test at this time in the morning. In my half awake state I sort of freaked out wondering if this was it and could this be how I was going to die. Turns out some kid next door of my not very soundproof apartment was just playing with some sort of toy that came with the air raid siren as one of the sounds. Figured that out cause a few minutes later while I was panicking the sound turned into a loud police siren instead. Then an ambulance siren. Then some other siren. I went back to sleep. I had a burglar break into my apartment through one of the windows in the front while I was sleeping in the back bedroom. I could hear them working the window open and trying to be quiet as they eased past the many blinds. I got up, took out my revolver and cocked it. In the quiet apartment. Like 3 a.m. The sound was really loud and distinctive. The guy breaking in jumped back out the window and ran off. I remember putting on my bathrobe and going outside and the police were already out there. One of my neighbors had called them. 
Standing there in their spotlight in my bathrobe with a big revolve the cops asked did you get him it was pretty surreal. Woke up from a horrible nightmare about a skin peeling demon thing to see the shadow of a man in my room and something crawling on my arm. It was a cardboard cutout I was surprised with 3 nights prior and a freaking gecko just coming to say hi. I slept on the floor in my brother's bedroom for the rest of the night. Woke up in the middle of the night to what I thought was my blanket all crammed up between me and the wall. It was uncomfortable so I went to move it but instead of a blanket I touched human skin. Of course I immediately freaked the frick out and am now wide awake wondering what the crap to do as I lay in the dark with this thing laying next to me. So I gather up my courage, reach over and grab it and yank it up so I can see what it is. It was storming and lightning flashed very dramatically at the same moment while I realize I'm holding my own arm. I guess I'd been sleeping on my arm and it went so numb that I couldn't even tell I was touching it. Haven't laughed that hard in a while. Shoulder beat the crap out of him. My sister laughing. She had been dead for about a week. I was staying at my parents house and was just sleeping on the couch. My dad had passed out in his armchair on the other side of the house and my mom was upstairs in the bedroom. My sister's laughter came from the kitchen which was sort of between where we all were and sure enough we all converged on the kitchen because we all heard it. Needless to say we were freaking out a bit. Her phone, which had died, was plugged into a charger in the kitchen. It had turned itself on and begun playing a video of her laughing and playing with her new puppy. We all just stood there and listened to it, then turned it off and went to bed without really talking about it. None of us believe in paranormal stuff and I'm a real atheist skeptic, but it was really jarring tech based oddity to wake up to. A loud bang downstairs and then my dog zooming to the front door and snarling. By the time I had grabbed my gun and got downstairs whoever it was was already peeling out of the driveway. I guess they assumed the house we had just moved into was still unoccupied and got the scare of their lives. Looks like they were trying to kick the door down to gain access. My good boy got some steak the next day as a reward. We got burgled and the cat just sat there and watched. If he had had the ability, he probably would have shown them where the expensive crap is kept. I was renting a house. It was my first ever place by myself and it was my first night staying there. I didn't have the internet there yet, nor did I have cell phone service. I got woken up with the sound of someone kicking in my back door. Stunned shocked I didn't know what to do. Do I just stay quiet and wait? Hope it goes away? WTF do I do? I really had no options. I didn't have a gun or any means to protect myself, especially being upstairs. Most of the things I could use to protect myself were downstairs and in boxes at that. So I shouted I had a gun and I was calling the cops. It took a few times of yelling it, but whoever it was eventually stopped. Somehow that person didn't break the door frame to enable them to get into the house. I still don't know how to this day. It was fricked and had to be replaced and also reinforced. Also, in that same house, woken up to multiple gunshots and a drive-by shooting right behind my house. Are the memories. Even if a phone doesn't have service it will still call 9 one one in the us at least i've told this story before but here it is again i moved into my first apartment and got a cat my third night there i'm woken by the sound of my kitten seemingly screaming in pain i frantically search the apartment to find him and he's just sitting on the couch sleeping confused i go back to bed few minutes later he is howling again i go to the living room and still he's sleeping on the couch then another scream he looks at me, and immediately hides under the couch. I realize the scream is coming from the bedroom. I search everywhere. Under the bed, in the closet, in the adjoining bathroom. Nothing. The next scream I realize is coming from the back hall. I go to my door, and look through the peep hole. The old woman who lives below me and shares the back hall with me is standing on my landing. Staring at the wall with a blank look on her face screaming like a cat. I found out later. Or, you know. At that moment, that she was pretty severely mentally ill. Other than this instance she was the perfect neighbor. I miss her dearly. Yep, that would freak me the frick out alright. This happened like when I was 8 or 9 and sometimes when I went to bed I would make hand shadows and the wall next to me. Well one time I did this I raised my hand up and started waving it like you do when saying hello to someone. But after I put my hand down a different shadow appeared and started waving back. 
This really scarred me and I always slept facing away from that wall until we moved out of the house. Old habits die hard. AWW, but it sounded so friendly. Posted about this before. I woke up to what sounded like the car keys in my kitchen being moved, followed by two men talking. At the same time, I could feel myself slip into sleep paralysis. I was so afraid they were going to murder me. I snapped out of it after a while of struggling and checked the house. No one was there and my car keys were in the same spot. I was just hearing things, probably due to sleep paralysis. I always get a little jumpy the first night I am alone when my spouse travels for work, which is pretty frequent. One night, I turned off the light and started falling asleep. About 10 minutes after I turned off the light, I thought I was still awake. I opened my eyes for some reason and saw a large shadow, human sized, dart from the door of my room across to the window on the other side. I sat bolt upright and screamed out loud, turned on the light and nothing was there. I did not think I was asleep, but it is possible. The orientation of the windows would not have allowed for a shadow moving in that direction. No idea what happened. Could have been dreaming. Never happened again. Hypnagogic hallucinations. I think that's the one as you fall asleep. Banging on the front door of our family home at 2am when I was 6 years old. My dad had a cricket bat at the ready, only to come face to face with a dog walker who kindly informed us that our backyard was completely engulfed in flames. Our neighbor had chickens and had been burning waste, thought the fire was out, only for a spark to catch and for a huge fire to steadily spread across both of our yards. I also witnessed the bravest action I've ever seen a human being carry out that night. One of the firefighters asked my dad if there was anything flammable in our shed, which was completely encased in fire. There was a small gas canister for barbecues. Without hesitation the firefighter runs into the shed, disappears for a few seconds, then returns carrying the canister. One of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Me not breathing. My eyes shot open because I realized something was wrong. Had a realization that my lungs were burning and I didn't know when I'd taken my last breath. Tried to breathe in. Couldn't. Panicked. And then my body finally took a huge gasp. It was maybe 2 seconds between my eyes opening and that gasp. But it felt like time was in slow motion. Sleep apnea is no joke. This was when I was 400 plus pounds. Since that happened 4 years ago I have changed my diet and have gotten down to 175 pounds. No more apnea. I never want to experience that again. I suffer from sleep paralysis. One night I was having an episode where I was stuck on my bed and I heard a loud noise in the dream. When I woke up, I looked out into my room and saw what looked like a man sprawled over my chair and the bang I heard I figured was him landing there from crawling in my window. Turns out the clothes arranged on my chair made the silhouette look like a guy. Took a while to fall back asleep. Not that scary in retrospect but that weird period of transition between sleep and awake can be disorienting. One night about 2am, I don't know why I woke up, but I did, and immediately saw a giant spider on the wall. Like, the kind of dinner plate sized monster they have in Australia. I freaked out and scrambled out of bed screaming which woke up my husband and made him freak out. And then I woke up fully and realized I'm a freaking idiot. He hadn't woken up fully though so it was kind of hard explaining to him that I thought saw a giant spider but it's okay. It's gone now. A few months later, the same thing happened where he woke me up, scared shitless, because a giant spider was on the wall. It was just his imagination. We're both kinda dumb sometimes. I think you're being haunted by a spider. Posted this before was living in student housing so a studio apartment. Woke up to a guy on my balcony who had opened my window and curtains and was shining inside my room with his phonolite. A few years ago, we had a pipe freeze and burst in the middle of the night. The smoke detectors went off, though there was no smoke, and I came downstairs to find that it was raining in our kitchen. Ultimately it wasn't a huge deal, though it caused about $50k in damage. But those two minutes that it took to understand what happened with all of the water and the noise, and crying kids was terrifying. It wasn't a huge deal. $50k in damage. Pick one. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.